and every little bit of water's like gold there's only probably a week's water there but I'm <laughs> I'm using it so <laughs> Each morning, Bess Harrison heads off to check the vast network of pipes and pumps on one of Australia's largest sheep stations. Bess is the water overseer at Madura Plains Station, which lies about halfway between Perth and Adelaide on the Nullarbor Plain. With the station entering its third year of drought, her role has never been more important. Today, she's fixing a pump on the northern border of the 728,000 hectare station. Yeah, the guys are keeping an eye out for waters and they let me know what's going on. Stations only work with everyone working together and if I can go around and fix what the problems are and make sure the sheep got all the water they need. In the last four years since the South Australian Cooper family took over the property, the water overseer has seen some major infrastructure upgrades. This includes about 800 kilometres of new water pipes, brand new fences, bores, smaller paddocks and solar water pumps. Yeah, we've, we've gone from a hell of a lot of windmills with not very good water, quite salty water, to nine holes pumping nearly fresh water. The investment in infrastructure meant the station hasn't had to destock and were able to keep valuable use just as prices soared when the drought broke in the eastern states. We retained old ewes um, leading up into the drought, knowing that there would be a, a national shortage of sheep. And uh, with the rain over east, that worked incredibly well. Station manager Tom Austin oversees 25,000 merino sheep. So, these are some of our merino maidens. Uh, they, they've just turned one year old. And as you can see, the poor little tykes haven't seen a green stick in their life. This is their, their second year in drought. Last year was the worst year on record for rainfall. It was half the previous bad year. So, uh, so yeah, this year we've had no significant rainfall. The sheep are living on saltbush and bluebush, which has got very high salt content. To have good, clean, cool water, it has been the game changer. It's, uh, it's got us where we are now. The Cooper family has embraced other technology, including fitting each sheep with an electronic tag to monitor and measure them, and remotely monitoring each water point from an app. Whoever's got access to that, wherever they are in the world, they can do a water run on Madura Plains. They can see what's going on. It's, it's a great labour saver. The, to get around this place, the, the roads are terrible. Um, it's hard on vehicles and it you know, ties up staff. It's, it's definitely going to change, change the way we do things. Technology may go a long way to surviving droughts in a warming climate, but it requires big capital investment. For pastoralists like Russell Swan, it's out of reach. He owns and manages Virginia Plains, a 260,000 hectare cattle station on the Nullarbor, which is almost completely out of water. Extremely dry, yeah, probably, probably as dry as we've ever had. You know, it's from 69 through to about 74 was pretty, pretty desperate, but this is probably pretty much matched it now. We're going into year six of pretty dry conditions now, so jumping from next last option to next last option at the moment, so. He's taken a more conventional approach to the drought and cut back his cattle numbers to about 150 head, down from 1,500 six years ago. Without bores or irrigation, he relies on a series of dams, most of which are now dry, and he's carting what little water he has to his herd. And every little bit of water's like gold. There's only probably a week's water there, but I'm, <laughs> I'm using it, so. I've grown up out here, so I know it breaks eventually. It's just a case of hang in until it does, so. Oh, you get very tired. You get, get a bit despondent, but it doesn't do you any good. While Russell has no plans to leave, he faces years of rebuilding when the drought breaks. It's a situation avoided by another Nullarbor cattle station 
Fraser Range, which has turned to diversification to survive the drought. We've basically almost completely destocked. We think we've got about 250 head of cattle left, uh, and we've been hand feeding those since, since the start of the year. While the drought has decimated their livestock business, COVID-19 has had a similar impact to their tourism operation. It's been closed since April. Uh, we've got about 60 beds and, and 30 powered caravan sites and obviously half a million acres of unpowered caravan sites that, that's shut down at the moment with the, with the COVID and the, the border being closed. We run a, a small earth moving contracting business. Uh, we do a lot for the exploration uh, industry and uh, we do a, do a fair bit in the fire season, fighting bushfires. Uh, with, the, with the COVID and, and with the last three years of drought, the, the contracting business is what's, what's sort of saved us. We wouldn't be here now without it because we've lost the, the other two aspects of the business. With climate change predicted to intensify drought, it's clear business as usual just won't cut it in the years ahead. But whatever approach is taken to farming in extreme times, there's one thing they all want in their future. Oh, look, we've all got in mind that it's going to rain and uh, the wheels are going to turn again and uh, that's, that's what we desperately want.